Agriculture Committee on the Commerce Amendment Bill. Now the bill is set down for second reading. The House comes to oral questions. Question number one is in the name of David Seymour. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My, minister, my, my question is to the Minister of Housing and Urban Development and reads as follows. Does he believe that the residential property market, as currently regulated, leads to excessive profits for landlords? <coughs> the Honourable Phil Twyford. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Although steep rent rises have hurt low-income renters in many cases in recent years, in general, I do not believe that the Residential Tenancies Act 1986 leads to excessive profits for landlords. I do, however, consider that the Act does not strike the right balance between landlords and tenants. That's why we've announced proposals to strike a new balance between providing tenants with more secure tenure and allowing them to make their house a home while protecting the rights and interests of landlords. If landlords are not making excessive profits, then who will pay the cost of the new standards the Minister intends to regulate for the upkeep of rented homes? Well, I would expect that the, um, the cost of meeting the new standards, like um, those that are set out in the draft um, uh, standards for the residential, uh, for, sorry, for the Healthy Homes Guarantee Act, like, for instance, putting in a heat pump or some insulation or draft stopping or drainage, will be dealt with in exactly the same way as landlords do currently, as when uh, the house needs painting or the roof needs replacing or the piles, piles need um, fixing. So is the Minister saying that landlords are not making excessive profits, Tenants are hurt by steep rent increases, and now new costs will be put into the renting of property, and that will somehow be paid for by magic. No, that's not at all what I said. I said that in some cases, in some regional housing markets, low-income renters have been hurt in recent years by rising rents, primarily caused by a lack of housing supply. Um, but. Uh, I would say that our government is unapologetic about the fact that we are modernising the standards for rental properties because, in our view, it's long past time that this country was sending 40,000 kids to hospital every year with infectious diseases, mostly because they're living in rental properties that are cold and damp. Paul Eagle. Uh, point. Speaking. Hey. Sorry, a point of order, David Seymour. Uh, Mr Speaker, my, my question was tight and asked who will pay the cost of improvements to homes. Now, I don't believe the Minister even tried to address that basic kernel of, of who pays the cost. I think he did. Paul Eagle. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Southland, what changes is the government proposing to how the residential property market is regulated? Mr Speaker. Our tenancy laws are antiquated. They don't reflect the fact that renting is now a long-term reality for many, many families. The government is proposing changes that will strike a fairer balance between providing tenants with security of tenure and allowing them to make their house a home while protecting the rights and interests of landlords. We know that the vast majority of landlords take good care of their properties and treat their tenants fairly. Those people will see no real change from the government's reforms. However, the current law is so weak that it permits a small number of exploitative people to rent out unhealthy, dangerous houses and charge exorbitant rents. Our reforms will clean up the rental market, and that's good for the vast majority of landlords and their tenants. Question number two, the Honourable Simon Bridges. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Prime Minister.